Needham Board of Health is set to vote on a new policy at its November 22nd meeting that, if approved, would ban the sale of nicotine and tobacco products to anyone born on or after January 1st, 2004. In recent months, the board has held public hearings where many medical professionals voiced support for the regulation, while several business representatives from outside Needham expressed opposition. Municipal producer Yu Xiaoyuan spoke with Tim McDonald, Director of Health and Human Services, and Karen Shannon, Substance Use Prevention Program Coordinator, to learn more about this proposal. Needham um, Public Health and the Needham Board of Health have a long history working on substance use prevention, uh, going back to Tobacco 21. Needham was the first community uh, in the country to adopt the minimum legal sales age of 21 for the purchase of tobacco and nicotine products. Needham's adoption of Tobacco 21 in 2003, also initiated by the Board of Health, ultimately influenced the state and the nation to raise the minimum sales age for tobacco to 21. In 2020, Brookline became the first municipality in the country to enact a tobacco-free generation law, which was challenged by local business owners but upheld by the Massachusetts Supreme Judicial Court earlier this year. This decision paves the way for other communities to adopt similar bans that would eventually bar all future generations from buying tobacco products. One of the sort of unique um, and nice elements of the nicotine-free generation policy is the fact that nothing is taken away. You know, there's no constitutional right to smoke, but it's very challenging in a policy and a government sense when you give someone an ability or a right to do something to then take that away. So this isn't saying that people who are 23 can't purchase cigarettes. It's just saying anyone who can't purchase cigarettes as of right now will never be able to purchase cigarettes. So those people haven't lost something, they just didn't gain something. The Needham Public Health Division conducted an equity analysis to evaluate how this policy might affect diverse populations. The study stated the tobacco industry has historically targeted racial and ethnic minority groups, including Native American and African American populations, and that smoking rates are higher among the LGBTQ plus communities than their peers. We've also compared it to our local data. We looked at our um, Metro West Adolescent Health Survey data for our Needham students, and we see even a discrepancy there that cigarette smoking rates and vaping rates are higher still for our community, our students of color, for example, or our LGBTQ plus students. But in cases of all of the populations that have been examined in this assessment, um, we recognize that there is a willingness among um, these different populations to want to quit. And so in fact, we know that for most people, it takes multiple attempts in order to quit. So cessation programs become a really important factor to consider in implementing a, a policy such as nicotine-free generation. Since the Board of Health opened for public comments at the September 5th meeting, multiple supporters have spoken oh, in like favor of the policy, of including Dr. Jonathan Winnikoff, a pediatrician at Mass General Hospital. As Massachusetts pediatricians, We've treated many hundreds of young patients suffering from tobacco use disorder that negatively affect their developing brains, rob them of their agency, and too often opportunity to enjoy the natural vitality of youth. Nicotine itself is associated with worsening depression, anxiety, and ADHD. The vaping crisis among adolescents has reversed some of the important progress achieved over the decades to get kids into adulthood tobacco-free. Opposition primarily came from representatives of the New England Convenience Stores and Energy Marketers Association, who warned of potential negative impacts on local businesses and argued it infringed upon personal liberties. I'll ask this board, please don't prohibit my Needham convenience store owning colleagues from selling nicotine products to adults on whom prevailing laws and societal norms have long since imposed responsibility for their own decisions. The instant that you pass this policy, your retailer's license and their business will be instantly devalued. According to McDonald, there are currently six retailers in Needham that sell tobacco and nicotine products. The equity study shows youth smoking rates have significantly declined since 2006, 
suggesting the Tobacco 21 policy has been effective and the new policy might have less disruptive impact on businesses. Because of the way nicotine free generation works, it is only affecting future customers, customers who aren't of age yet, and by setting that date that um, the policy would dictate will really make a very make for a slower impact of um, those decline that decline in sales. A slow decline in, in um, sales could also allow business owners to have time to adjust their business model. McDonald noticed that Tobacco 21 policy faced similar criticisms initially, with concerns that residents would travel to neighboring towns to buy tobacco. The idea that if you have a good public health policy, it can spread and grow um, is kind of the only real response to people who say that someone can go to other communities. It's absolutely sure, true that someone can go to another community and purchase. That extra inconvenience is a barrier that that turns away some people. The Board of Health will keep the public hearing open until its November 22nd meeting, when the vote on the policy will take place. Residents and store owners are encouraged to submit comments to the board or speak at the meeting. For Needham Channel News, I'm Yu Xiaoyuan.